morning, everybody. I was uh, having a, a very nice conversation with, uh, with an old acquaintance outside, and he walks up to me and says, uh, can we do it now? So, uh, of course, uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, so welcome. My name is Grant Finnamore. I am a, uh, the MD and uh, founder at a company called Guru Hut. We're a boutique development company, a subsidiary of, Atlas of Obsidian Systems, and we have been running for 18 years. Myself, uh, I do a bit of everything. I'm basically, I do everything that everybody else doesn't want to do. So uh, aside from my day job as a Java developer, Atlassian consultants and DevOps evangelist, I also run the business. So today, we're going to talk about two things. Uh, I also see that my time is cut a little bit short, so I'm going to have to rush through a few things. Uh, there are two parts to it. I'm going to initially talk about JIRA and an integrated development workflow. It is uh, similar to a presentation I've done in the past, but I've made some changes. I've tried to bring it up to date. So hopefully there's enough new information in there that everybody uh, um, gets something out of it. And secondly, I want to talk about JIRA as a way to enable a business um, process uh, for a small company, uh, in this case, a company called IdentiPet. Uh, so those are the two parts of it. With that, I'd like to jump into the first part uh, immediately. And what I'm wanting to demo is a very simple Java application uh, and show you how we can use the Atlassian tooling, or at least some of the Atlassian tooling, uh, to um, provide for a fairly seamless development uh, experience uh, in, uh, in our development process. So in this, I'm going to be using uh, Bitbucket and Jira. Uh, going to be using some Slack in there as well. Um, Slack being a newer, uh, or, or, or the new, the, the new, uh, way that we, we do instant messaging. Uh, there's some AWS um, ECR in there as a container registry because my, uh, my application is deployed into a Kubernetes cluster uh, using a Docker, a, a Docker image. Um, so I want to go through that process. Okay, so now we come to our demo. Let's now put uh, this out and bring this forward forward and uh, let's open that up so really simply what we've got here is a very simple web application to give you a little bit of an indication of some of the technologies it's running on it's a Java web application it's deployed as a WAR file and running on a Tomcat uh, Tomcat application server that Tomcat application server is packaged into a Docker container uh, and then um, pushed up onto a Kubernetes cluster running in, uh, in AWS. Um, and uh, all of the Kubernetes provisioning is done using COPS. So a little bit of background. It's a really simple web page. What it does is every few seconds, it just refreshes. So hopefully when we go and change uh, something to the code, we'll be able to see um, the page refreshing without too much other um, pain. So one of the things that uh, we need to decide uh, is what is the business requirement that we're going to, um, or the business objective that we're going to fulfill, and it's really simple in this case. I just want to change the color uh, of the status field, um, so from a, green, from a blue to a green, uh, so it's just visible and we can see. I hope um, nobody's got too many issues seeing green on a white background. If you do, then yell and uh, we can make it uh, mauve or something else. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Jira and like any good um, project manager, I'm going to break my sprint and I'm going to introduce a new requirement uh, into, a, uh, into an existing sprint. 
So what needs to be done? Um, we're going to change uh, um, the state, status uh, color to green. So that's, uh, that's added something to my backlog. I'm going to shove it up. And Jira, the good tool that it is, tells me that this actually changes my scope. So I'm going to agree to that. It changes it. And we'll very quickly see that our issue is now uh, in our sprint. What, I, what I'm now wanting to do is I'm wanting to start work on that issue. And if we uh, use a tool like Bitbucket, we want to make sure that every feature request is a branch uh, in, in Bitbucket so that we can track that, uh, we can uh, isolate what developers work on, and we can start to see the change, uh, change in progress over time. So I'm going to go and within, inside Jira, I'm going to go and click on this uh, process to go and create a new branch. And this takes me to bitbucket.org. So I'm using uh, uh, bitbucket.org as opposed to a hosted bitbucket here. And it says, uh, what is this uh, type of branch? So it's a new feature. And uh, you can see there that the branch name is, uh, comes from uh, the, Jira, um, the, the Jira summary uh, field. So I'm going to create that. That creates a branch for me. And I'm then going to go and check that branch out in my, uh, in my IDE. So I've got a branch there. And uh, I'm going to just to take that, copy that, go to my IDE, open up a, uh, a terminal, and check that out. Hopefully it works. There we go. And so now I've checked that out. I'm going to go into the JSP page where I've got all of this. And I'm going to look for my, um, uh, my status. I say, OK, there is my all systems go. It's a lead. Uh, I'm going to go and find that all OK. And I'm going to change that color from blue to green. And then, um, oh. Before I do that, I want to show you something. Let's cancel that. We noticed something there. Yeah. It's a really nice um, time-saving thing. I don't have to remember that as a developer. I don't have to remember to move my issues into in progress. Simply by creating the branch, and telling my Jira workflow that the trigger for moving it uh, to in progress is that in Bitbucket I create a branch, I rely on Atlassian to do the heavy lifting for me. And I'm going to use that over and over. It's these sorts of things that we really want the tools to do. And Atlassian is really, really strong in that integration between these different products making sure that from a user point of view, we do the least amount of work and gain the most amount of benefit from the tool. Um, so, and this is going to be a, a, a feature throughout. So immediately, I'm now in progress. I'm going to go back to my code. And I'm going to now uh, add it. Um, changed. Color. Okay. So this has now pushed it uh, to, to Bitbucket. And I'm going to go over to here. And uh, see, there's my, there's my branch over there, my feature branch. And I can go and see that uh, I. I did a commit on it, and I changed something. One of the things that I had shown in previous versions of this demo was an integration to Bamboo, where as soon as you, uh, as soon as you made these changes, 
bamboo, um, automated process would pick, uh, would pick up the changes, go and rebuild it, re um, redeploy and, uh, and then present you with the results. With the, the newer versions of Bitbucket, Bitbucket's introduced pipelines. I don't know who's, um, who's used pipelines, um, but they're really a way to take a lot of the develop, or a lot of the, the work that you would do uh, in the past in Bamboo and simplify that using things like Docker containers. So we can see that there is a pipeline in progress which is building my code. And not only is it building my code, if I go into that, I can see exactly what's happening at each step. So it's building my code, it's taking my Docker image, or it's building a Docker image, it's pushing that up to an ECR registry, and then as a second step, it's taking that, um, that uh, image, and then it's going to deploy it into my Kubernetes cluster. So it's now in the second part of that, uh, and it's just deployed it. Okay, and because this is part of my feature branch, it's deployed it into a test environment. So I should be able to go into my test environment and see it's now green. And that's pretty cool. I didn't have to do a whole bunch of work and, um, and all of the other stuff happened behind. And not only that, um, but if I start to um, look at, uh, uh, look at, um, at Slack, um, I'm also getting all the messages that are happening, what's happening in each of these tools, all feeding into the single Slack channel. And so now everybody can see that. Everybody's got an idea of who's doing what. Uh, and I can do that for different projects. Um, I can have different uh, code repositories feeding into different Slack channels. Um, we can start to swarm about ideas. If there's a failure in the build, people can give me ideas and so on. And everybody's got a sense of what's going on. But at this point, all I've got, um, sorry, there we go, is uh, I've got a, um, I've got a, uh, um, a piece of code which I've deployed uh, and I've, I've uh, created this feature branch. I now want to uh, expose that to um, and actually push that up into live. And so how do we do that? Um, well, uh, if we have a look here, again, we, if we go into Jira, we can see there's my branch. I can go and look in that. And the way that we should be doing this is pull requests. We should not be relying or allowing developers to commit directly into our master branches or any of our protected branches for that matter. The only way they should get code in is via a pull request. A pull request should require a successful build, uh, at least one, um, and it should be reviewed by somebody else not the developer themselves. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to be another person now. Uh, so I'm going to create a pull request. Again, I'm doing this all um, through Bitbucket. I'm saying um, I'm happy with everything. I'm creating that pull request. Uh, you'll see over there, it shows me that there were successful builds. Creating that pull request, and I'm saying, yes, I approve of this and I'm going to merge it. Uh, it merges now, and that merge now pushes my code into my master branch, which if I um, go and have a look, sorry, over here, I should now see that there's a pipeline that's building against my master branch. So that pipeline uh, is, uh, is building my code again, making sure it all gets tested. I might uh, actually want to deploy this out to staging um, and then have a further process that will push it out to, uh, to live, um, but this is a fairly simple process right here. And so uh, in, a, in a minute or and a half or so, we should see 
um, that uh, our um, production um, stack goes green as well. Just see where it's at. And it's out into the Kubernetes side of the, um, the deployment now. One of the things that I haven't done here, which you can do to speed things up, is you can actually build your own Docker images that have um, extra uh, or the, the, the utility and the other binaries in it that you need. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'm doing things like updating my um, underlying uh, binary, uh, underlying system with any extra binaries. I'm installing some of the uh, uh, AWS uh, CLI images and so on. And that is something that you can you, you can set up simply by creating your own Docker um, Docker images and then publishing those. So this is now done. And if I go there um, to my production environment again. That's now green. So, and the last thing we want to do, sorry, is uh, go back to Jira and have a look. And there's my there's my uh, Jira issue. So, what pushed it to uh, in review is when I created the pull request. And what pushed it into done is when I merged the pull request into master. So those are the things. So as a developer, my workflow is dramatically simplified. There's not a lot of other stuff I have to do, and there's not a lot of things I need to remember to do. So that is a way that we can uh, integrate some of the Atlassian tools uh, to, get, uh, to get more um, out of them than simply, uh, simply installing them and keeping them uh, separate. Uh, but there are many other Atlassian integrations, and I really want to encourage you to explore those integrations. Um, all of the Atlassian products that you've got, figure out how they talk to each other how you can get them to more seamlessly work together. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people who are using Confluence heavily will have seen Confluence macros that pull out JIRA issues. Um, there's Bamboo integration. A lot of the stuff I did with uh, Bitbucket pipelines, you can do with Bamboo. Uh, there's the, the new JIRA tool, JIRA Ops. Uh, which starts to integrate and pull all your, uh, your support teams together uh, and how those integrate with other tools, uh, things like Slack as well. And then other tools, Source Tree, Status Page, Trello, Ops Genie. These are all tools that are designed to work well with others. So you really need to take some time to explore your integrations and make the most out of the tools. The tools work best when you spend the time actually getting them to talk to each other. So I really advise you and suggest that you do that. Okay, so now I want to move on to a different system. So IdentiPet. IdentiPet is a, uh, a small company uh, and they have a fairly large uh, community of, of users. Uh, at last count, uh, we had, um, well, they had close on half a million chipped pets uh, in South Africa, spread out over uh, somewhere around 200,000 owners. Uh, this is a, a system that has been running uh, since 1989. Uh, and I got involved with it in around about 2002, uh, where, we, um, where we extracted them uh, from running the system on a, Borlox, a Borland Paradox spreadsheet. Uh, 
and put them on a reasonable relational database uh, and started building out the systems from then. One of the things that they, um, that they do in order to make their, uh, their system reliable uh, and in order to carry on funding a lot of the, uh, um, uh, the other organizations that need things like scanners and so on but don't have the funds for that is they have an annual, um, an annual fee which people um, pay for their, um, for their pets to be on the, uh, on the system. And this system had been through a number of iterations over the years. When we first started, the post office was still reliable. This was a long time ago. And on an annual basis, uh, we would um, get an A, uh, it was an A2 um, page, printed out uh, on one side, and then we would uh, um, use a large format printer uh, to print out the, uh, the payment information on the flip side, and we'd run that through a PDF process. But the long and the short of that is that you could do that once a year. You had one chance to get hold of people. Uh, and we would have these boxes and boxes of, uh, of, of envelopes which had to be stuffed and then sent off uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the post office and you'd have printer jams and you'd have to um, reprint letters and all that. It, it was a lot of work, um, but it worked well enough for a while. Eventually, we started moving out uh, into an electronic system and starting to send out emails. And the first year we did this, we had a very ad hoc workflow-based system. It was, uh, there was lots of SQL involved, um, and there was, uh, there was a lot of pain and tears uh, involved in all of that. And over the year, I started thinking about how we would do this better. And we'd been using JIRA as a business process enabler at some other clients. And I thought, well, why can't we do the same thing here? Let's make every owner who owes a payment an issue. And let's have a workflow that tracks that payment. And then let's integrate other systems that we need in order to make this whole thing work. So JIRA itself doesn't uh, magically go and say, well, I'm going to transition 5,000 issues today and send out emails, because from a business point of view, the people inside the office, they know how, they, how busy they are. They know how many emails they can handle that day because they know how much of a response they expect to get. So we let them drive the process. They go in and they tell Jira, this is what I want you to do next. And we went for Jira Cloud uh, because A, we didn't want to manage Jira. We wanted to leave that alone. Um, it had a really nice scalable costing, uh, per user costing there. And we could live with the constraints. We could live with the 20 or 25 gigs. We could live, um, we could live with the fact that it's uh, out in the cloud somewhere. Those weren't issues for us. And we accept that it's not like that for everybody. This was the implementation view that we had. Um, we have JIRA uh, um, down there uh, in the little uh, yellow box. We built a custom application uh, for them, which integrated with a number of other systems. Uh, so we've got uh, Bulk SMS, Paygate, um, Google. Uh, we also had um, one of the bulk uh, email providers uh, in there as well, MailChimp. Uh, we used uh, Mandrel from MailChimp uh, in there as well. And this application, this custom application that we built, it was the nexus, it was the hub 
of um, this integration. We talked to Jira uh, via uh, the Jira um, the Jira webhook API. Uh, it would uh, it talk with all of these other products as necessary. It would listen for responses back, uh, and it would be able to distribute that work as necessary. Uh, into um, into the, the the team managing the payments. So there was a lot of um, of integration that happened there, and something we learned along the way uh, was that very often, uh, you know, you'd get or you'd get uh, hit by systems not not working or telling you that you had rate limits on them. So Google, for example, their, their URL shortener, uh, you can fire off two requests at that a second and then they'll tell you no more. So you've got to work out the rest of the processes uh, with all of those limits in mind and so we had to have retries and all of the rest of it into there. So it, it ended up working um, working really nicely but there was certainly some effort in getting, getting it to that point. This is a, a view of the, the workflow. And one of the things that you'll notice there is when you go from open into M1 queued, uh, what that means is that I want to send out the first message. So we tell Jira, um, put, this, put these issues into this queued status Jira then fires off webhooks to our application, our custom application. The custom application says, oh, okay, I'll note that. Okay? So it just puts that into a database because you want those webhooks to return quickly. You do not want to do work inside those webhooks. So you basically want to take that webhook, make a note of what you need to do, store that note persistently somewhere, uh, and, then re and then return to Jira. Um, so, so our application says, yep, I know you want to send this message. As soon as our application has talked to MailChimp and Mandrill and sent the message or talked to bulk SMS and sent the SMS, it goes and fires off a, uh, a RESTful web service, a RESTful um, yeah, web service into Jira and transitions that issue from queued to sent. It will, learn, it will then also add a comment to that issue to say, I've sent this message. And so we work through the process in that way. You'll notice that there are a couple of states where we can go from any state into, uh, into a status, so things like a manual payment or an EFT pending payment. EFTs are a pain, hate EFTs. Um, constantly waiting for somebody to send you through a proof of payment, then you're having to say, that reference number, where does that apply to? Uh, and what happens if the person commits to making a payment, but then they don't, and you've got to wait for them for a certain amount of time, and then you've got to follow up with them. Well, the follow-up we do using uh, Jira Service Desk, which is fantastic. So after five days, we just take all of those unpaid EFTs, send it off into Service Desk, and then we have an agent on Service Desk managing that process separately. Uh, eventually, um, we come through, uh, things get paid, we get into a receipted status, we take the, uh, we go and generate a, an invoice or a, a, a receipt for the, the person and we email that off to them uh, and if necessary we can go and do re-receipts and those sorts of things. So that's the workflow. So you'll see a lot of it um, is driven either by a human or by our custom application, which says, I know where the next thing, the, or the next status that you need to go to is. The other thing that we wanted to do is to try and have a single pane of glass for the, uh, for the end user. We wanted them to see Jira as their place to do all their work. We didn't want them to have to go to another system to get their information. And what we used here was we used the Atlassian Connect um, framework, and we were able to pull in information from our external systems and our external databases and present it inside JIRA. And there are a couple of panels that you can see in there that are um, somewhat different. 
we had a few custom fields. These were really just used to link our back office system with JIRA, so we know uh, which JIRA issue corresponds to which person in the back office. We had a payment detail panel. So here we've got a list of all the pets. Uh, we've got their chip numbers on them, so if somebody phones and says, uh, here's the chip number, we can go and fetch that. We've got a breakdown then by year of what they've paid, um, what they owe, if they don't owe anything for that year because the pet wasn't born yet. Uh, and then the total amount um, that, that, is, that is paid. And we also take note of certain types of business rules because things change over time. So the business in 2017 said everybody who has a pet implanted 2017 onwards no longer needs to pay anything. And so those business rules need to be taken into account. So all of this information, we're going and fetching it from our application, from our back-end databases, and putting it directly into JIRA so that the end user can see it there. The same thing for payments. Uh, if a payment comes through via credit card, immediately that gets uh, displayed here in this issue. People can respond to that and deal with that as they need to. And then finally, to bring this back to DevOps, there's, uh, there's this idea that we need to know what's happening in our systems. And monitoring is fine, but I find metrics to be um, equally useful. I want to see what's going on with the system. I want to know uh, how long things are taking, how much, uh, how many times things are happening. I want to know what my queues, what my queue lengths are like, how many messages I'm sending out, um, when I'm getting returns, and all of these things that are happening. And this is one of the dashboards we've built. Uh, and there's a lot of detailed information in there. We've literally got it up on screens in our offices where we can keep an eye on what's going on. And immediately you start seeing exceptions that, or you start to see a lot more exceptions. You can say there is a problem going on and we can deal with it. If somebody um, at five o'clock at night says, I want to send out 50,000 emails, we can, we can see that, it's immediately visible, and we can help them stop that process. So this provides us with far more information than simply, is it working or not? Sometimes, kinda, is the answer to that. So that's my presentation for this afternoon. Um, I don't know if there are any questions at this point. Fantastic. Well, I'll be around later on if you want to come and uh, raise something with me then. Um, that'd be great. But thank you all for your attention. Appreciate it.